Hello and welcome to part three of this special three-part GradCast episode series where we talk with stu graduate students at the University of Western Ontario about how COVID-19 has impacted their research and work since lockdown in March. In this episode, hosts Yusuf Hassan, Elizabeth Moeller, and Gavin Talamedi talk with master's students in the Occupational Therapy Program, Hannah Grover, and Amara Miles. So hi folks. Uh... Hi, I'm Amara Miles and ha Hannah, Hannah Grover. So you're both in the same program and um, I guess if you can share something about yourselves and how you know each other and find, oh, I'll stop asking questions, go ahead. <laughs> uh, Hannah, do you wanna go first? <laughs> sure. Um, so Amara and I are classmates. We are okay. both in the second year of our studies in Western's occupational therapy program, which is a two-year program. Uh, and it's a master's level program. And we go way back to September, 2019. We got to attend class in person together, uh, but wow. recently it's been a while. It's been seven, eight months since I've seen Amira in person. <laughs> we've been online since then so um okay. so it's always good to see her face on my screen <laughs> likewise <laughs> wow and amara 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 yeah i mean hannah summed it up pretty nicely but we are the society of graduate students reps for the occupational therapy program so i think we got to know each other a little better by going to the meetings in person back in the day um but now uh since covid has overcame our program we've been attending those um, meetings online now but still chatting behind the scenes so, so the world transformed uh once covid began and it has impacted our lives so much i guess we wanted to know how it has impacted your life as an as an academic and also just as friends as well I can go first since you took that last one. <laughs> um, no, that's a really great question. And I know that COVID has affected all of our lives in some way or another. Um, I'm going to use our occupational therapy lens to talk about how it's impacted our lives. So um, occupational therapy um, is um, like a master's program, like Hannah said here. And the field of occupational therapy really prides itself at looking at three different fields in the areas of things that people want to do, need to do, and are expected to do in their everyday lives. So when I say that, we look at um, things that we need to do every day in our lives, basic activities, kind of just like getting out of bed, brushing your teeth, basic hygiene, eating, things like that. Um, we also look at our leisure activities. So things that we like to do are for fun, our hobbies. And then we also look at things that we are expected to do in our everyday lives. So going to work, may or maybe you're a student or you're a parent. So since COVID has hit, I think our leisure activities have been pretty affected. Um, going yeah. from an online, or sorry, an in-person program to an online program. Definitely our socialization and our interactions with our peers have definitely diminished. Um, for our program specifically, we are required to do um, numerous placements throughout our two-year program um, where we're in different settings, shadowing an occupational therapist and doing clinical and hands-on skills. And uh, our second placement of our program was supposed to happen between May and August of this summer. Um, it's an eight-week uh, placement, but unfortunately that was cancelled. So that kind of gave us a lot of open time and free time and uh, this, this placement was kind of canceled kind of into the summer at a point where people, it was difficult for people to kind of find a job or find volunteer experience because it was already going into the summer. So I found that myself and a lot of my peers just had a lot of free time on our hands. And, you know, in normal circumstances, it would be a great opportunity to take up, you know, a new hobby or a new activity. But with COVID and all these restrictions, it was, it was hard to to do that or to take up something that was meaningful to me in a different way. So I really struggled to kind of stay motivated in everyday life. Um, See, yeah. yeah, that's that's hard. And especially when the summer begins, when you 
you want to take a break and maybe just enjoy uh, going in public spaces and um and all of a sudden you can't do that so i was wondering how did both of you fill that void um uh, at this at this time <laughs> so hannah if you want to start off maybe sure that's another great question um I think one of the, the things I've been really inspired about is how my fellow classmates have um, been able to fill their time. I think after we found out about this huge chunk of space in the summer that um, we weren't going to have school <laughs> during, um, personally, I think there was that period where I felt like I had no clue what to do with all this extra space. Mm -hmm. um, it was, you know, definitely not a lot of opportunities out there to to go out, to access the same kinds of places that I would normally go to in my free time, like gyms or um, like seeing friends, uh, other people's places. And, uh, so I think over the summer, I definitely tried out a bunch of different things. Like what? <laughs> um, I, as a kid, I was really into sewing and oh, cool. like embroidery and uh, crafting and that kind of thing. And um, so, I mean, I haven't had the space in my life to really nurture that hobby since I was a kid but that was definitely something that I kind of returned to this summer fell in love with crafts again and um doing physical things like that and uh and yeah and I definitely I think just spent a lot more time outdoors and I think like really dedicated my time to being outside more um Came to greater appreciation for our outdoor spaces and uh, uh yeah, yeah that's really nice um for some of us it's been i mean it's also been a bit a bit of a challenge as well to do some of these basic things like sometimes i spent way too much time inside i just i don't know what to do outside but i there is plenty to do um and amara amara what do you think how did you um occupy that time differently um no great question i at first i i had all this free time and i was like wow this is going to be great i'm going to be able to be productive and fill it up with maybe you know like volunteer hours or spending time with friends but i kind of realized that those things just weren't available to me and so i started to panic a bit um i was lucky enough to find um like an eight week job position oh, good yeah um, tell us about that that's really exciting yeah, yeah it was uh, I was very grateful for the opportunity it was a it was run through the Canada summer jobs program so they were jobs that were available for for students um, and I I'm originally from Vancouver so I was back in Vancouver for the summer and I worked for a company called North Shore Connections um, they provide a variety of resources and programs for people that have intellectual disabilities yeah. so yeah so I was working in their recreation department so I was um, working with people mostly that had Down, Down syndrome um, or on the autism spectrum or uh, had a cerebral palsy. So usually the variety of those three. And I was developing and facilitating um, just recreation programs, but on Zoom. So, Ooh, nor yeah. That's so not easy. It's not, yeah. That must have been interesting. That is unusual. Yeah. So, I mean, normally these, yeah, these programs are, are done in person and um, they're kind of like a day program. So um, people can come in and they run a variety of activities during the day. It's, you know, there's like cooking, crafts, sports, like leisure style activities. We had to kind of transition that onto an online platform just because the people that I were working with, I mean, COVID was still occurring. So um like none of these these programs were running but also the people that i'm working with also were immunocompromised so it was not safe for them to kind of be in public or be around other people so we had to be really mindful of that um and the people i was working with too their leisure activities make up a huge part of their day normally and when that's taken from them 
it can be really challenging not only for themselves but for their caretakers um, just because their caretakers are having to find way to, more ways to kind of occupy their time and all the time so um, being able to facilitate things through zoom um, was definitely a challenge but really uh, rewarding at the end for myself and then for the participants and their caretakers as well what type of um virtual activities were you able to put together in the end for your for everyone with the um immune comp immune compromised yeah systems? For, for sure so um i i have a human connects background so my my degree is in human connects from ubc so i took more of like um, a physical health approach to facilitating um programs I was working with other groups of people that kind of had their own specialties. You know, I was working with a person who kind of wanted to do more like arts and crafts um, with the participants online. I was running kind of like exercise programs um, for the participants as well as um, like yoga classes and then mindfulness classes as well. Um, so, nice. yeah, so I kind of took that approach and it was definitely different. It was it was just interesting trying to facilitate that type of program with a population that has a variety of complex needs and learning how to kind of match those needs. Um, yeah, through an online format. So you mentioned earlier that placements for your cohort were impacted. What was that like? And, and what what are some of the options that your program is offering so you can get uh, the required number of hours? I'm, I'm sure in OT that you need a certain number of hours to graduate as, as you would in, in many professional programs. So what's that kind of looking like? Maybe we'll start with take... <laughs> Amira, go ahead. <laughs> are you sure? I feel like I've been blabbing this whole time. Okay, maybe we'll go to Hannah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think as we OTs do, uh, we've had to get a bit creative with uh, how to fill up those fieldwork hours that are required in order for us to graduate uh, and qualify to write our exam at the end of this program, uh, which certifies us to practice. Um, it's been, I think it's a little bit of a mixture of things. Um, we the department has coordinated an opportunity for us to um, do complete some workshops as a way of fulfilling fieldwork hours. And uh, our classmates are doing a workshop in motivational interviewing, which is an intervention technique that's used in the field of occupational therapy. Um, we're also taking a mindfulness-based stress reduction workshop course and that will count towards our fieldwork hours as well. And then uh, our fieldwork coordinator is also um, adding on an extra week or two weeks, I think, of the in-person clinical fieldwork that we will have coming up this January and again this next June. Um, in order to kind of add on some hours in that sense as well. So Hannah, I was wondering when you're in touch with your colleagues through Zoom meetings and uh, other venues, um, what are they doing? What are other people, your friends doing in, in coping with COVID-19 and marching on with their work in some form or the other? Uh, are there any stories that you'd like to share with us? Uh, sure. I think the the transition to Zoom online learning has definitely been a steep learning curve. Uh, I'm sure for others as well as um, us in the OT program. But I think one of the benefits of online learning is that uh, it does create a little bit more opportunity for people to connect in different ways. Um, some of our classmates have started up uh, initiatives outside of school, kind of in the occupational therapy field, related to international opportunities, mm -hmm. uh, international networking with other occupational therapy students across the world. Um, another group has started up that I think is hoping to share information and uh, 
learn more about assistive technologies that we as occupational therapists might use with clients in the future. That's and cool. Yeah, so all of these great initiatives that our classmates have really, I think, started up. There's an anti-racism yeah. discussion group now. Mm-hmm. Like, there's all of these things that students have, have, I think, taken upon themselves as a way to kind of make up for that missed social interaction um, and that immersive kind of feeling like we, we aren't quite getting that immersive experience in Mm -hmm. the OT program because we're all so far away from each other. (laughs) Are you totally online or are you doing any courses in person or any labs in person? We are completely online right now, um, but come the middle of November, we're going to be going into labs uh, full-time for 10 days straight. Mm. Um, Yeah, so it's just to kind of make up like labs that I guess should have occurred throughout the semester. How are you, how are you both feeling about, you know, it's going to be in person. I'm, I'm, I'm sure Western has all kinds of protocols and PPE in place, but how are you feeling about that going in person? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, yeah, I do, you know, trust Western to ensure that they do have the appropriate protocols and PPE in place. Um, we don't know like the specifics of how like our day is going to look. Um, but other than that, I'm actually really looking forward to being around my peers. I, I've really missed that social interactions. And while I have been able to see a, a few friends here and there where it's been safe, uh, I'm really looking forward to not only just seeing them in person, be but being able to, I guess, work with them together as well, Mm -hmm. because come Mm -hmm. the future, they are going to be my coworkers. They were going to be colleagues um, in a working field. So even getting that practice now is going to be incredibly important for the future. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I guess Um, I'm trying to imagine the hardest thing would probably be like, you you see everyone in person and I mean, it depends on how big your social bubble as they say on the news is but i guess i guess some of you will have to restrain from the giant group hugs that you probably want to give <laughs> as soon as you walk through those doors definitely yeah that's gonna be, be challenge. Challenge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah maybe one I'm... group hug no one... <laughs> <laughs> just just for one guys what's the <laughs> with masks and yeah. face shield. Yeah, exactly. All Full suited up. hazmat suit. Yeah. yeah. That's been <laughs> sprayed with light. On the news, though. And a hand sanitizer bath salt. afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A hose of hand sanitizer. <laughs> yes. What was, I was wondering, what was the initial, um, as COVID was, you know, gaining more traction, it was getting worse and worse. What was your initial reaction to the situation? And what did you think, um, what the, the future would look like in a few months at that time and how have you managed to just deal with the situation as it is right now um uh, uh, amara maybe or <laughs> Ooh, i i can take that one hannah if you want sure, <laughs> sure go for it uh, that's a, a heavy question um I, I, I remember specifically like kind of the day that we found out that Western would be going online and I was with a group of all of my friends. We were out for dinner and it was kind of like the day before our, our reading week. So we were kind of meeting up for one last time and all going, you know, for reading week to wherever we were from and then we would come back. Um, and so I said goodbye to my friends on that day not knowing that I wouldn't see them for months. So looking back on that, yeah, it's pretty crazy to think about. I really didn't think that we would be in this position come what, like eight months later. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I tried to remain really positive about the situation that, you know, when I came back from my reading week, school was online and okay, that was fine, but we'll still have placement. Everything will be normal. Well, placement was canceled and then my sc- my summer was open and then we found out school would be online for this semester. So I've been trying to find that balance between remaining positive about my future in the program and how our, this next year would play out, but then being realistic just based on what, you know, our government and our 
our like medical organizations are giving us in terms of like the information. Mm -hmm. So I've been trying to find that balance. I don't know if I've exactly have found that there are definitely good days where I feel really positive about what's to come. But then there are days where it's, it's pretty depressing, you know, to watch the news and social media and find out, you know, cases are going up or people aren't wearing masks. Um, So I think what's been really important for me, what's been my sanity is just staying connected with my friends and my family. Um, Not necessarily as much as in person now, but definitely like over Zoom and and being more purposeful when contacting my friends. Um, Yeah. And how about you, Hannah? What has given you balance uh, in your life? I think uh, definitely thinking almost occupational therapy myself in a way um one of I think the the biggest things that I thought about right away when we sort of went into lockdown back in the spring was that um as occupational therapy students we really believe in the power of activity and occupation in influencing our mental and our emotional and our spiritual well-being And so I think with all of that balance that we had going into lockdown, all of a sudden disrupted, it's definitely been a challenge to sort of strike that right right balance between how we're spending our time um, since everything has changed. Uh, Like Amara said, I think socializing in these new forms over Zoom, (laughs) phone calls, that kind of thing um, has been really important. Um, And I think also taking time to focus on gratitude for what I do have in my life. Um, One of the positives that has come out of COVID is that I've moved back home with my family. And uh, and it's been great to reconnect, like connect in a really meaningful way with my parents again. And uh, (laughs) my siblings. I think many of us can relate. (laughs) I can re- we can relate to that feeling of reconnecting with many people who are dear to us and uh, people who we weren't in contact with such a long time for because we're so busy <laughs> and all of a sudden we're like uh, I think we know whom to contact and stay in touch with and that's amazing that you got to experience that in your with your family um, that's wonderful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's I mean, like- don't get me wrong, we definitely. Uh... Have our moments where we're trying to oh no of course that goes without <laughs> saying i mean of course of course it it's comes a, it's, it's a, a package i mean what's a, a family without some here. tensions yeah. here and there <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. yeah we'll be in the middle of class and and someone will slam a door or be banging around in the kitchen and <laughs> you'll have to turn say? the video Use off me. and mute yourself and say mom can you keep it down <laughs> uh, you forgot to mute <laughs> uh, it, it almost shows the irony a little bit with COVID that something that like the whole global pandemic pretty much blo- locking everyone or supposed to be locking everyone up until it all passes but in a way it's connected people differently like especially via like Zoom is probably the one of the best examples but just online in general people wanting to help each other more everyone reconnecting like Hannah I really loved your example reconnecting with your family back home so i think it's like it's a little bit of an irony we like to think about with, with the situation that we're in mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i think also socializing kind of takes on a different form when it's oh, yeah. on a screen mm-hmm. or yep. um over a telephone mm-hmm. and i um similar to amira i volunteer with a an organization that does like arts-based programming for nice. individuals with uh, very diverse disabilities. And um, I think one of the things that has been most interesting to observe is that uh, social skills that we, we rely on in person um, don't necessarily translate to the Zoom platform or a video chat platform. Mm-hmm. And um all these skills like waiting your turn and listening and um validating others when you're talking to them they kind of look different and and feel different when you're 
interacting with someone Mm -hmm. not in person absolutely and I think the other thing is that you know on zoom there's this sort of virtual space and and it's like sometimes you feel like you're talking into a void and I think <laughs> just being able to sort of let to be okay with silence is something I've learned how people process what I've said you know silence is very powerful sometimes it helps people to speak up if there's just silence people can't take it and they're just like I want to say something yeah. I do that with my students sometimes you know just be silent <laughs> and they, they will ask a question that's <laughs> mean <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, just sometimes. So you're telling me you volunteer your students to speak. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, where do you both see yourselves in three months' time, given the ch- sort of change in our rules? They're, they're fluctuating. They go back and forth. It's like they loosen up the rules and they have to tighten it up again because more COVID cases. Have you thought of yourself um, how do you see yourself in these coming months and your projects as well that you may have in mind? Um, so I'm just trying to think of three months from now. That was just a challenge in itself. Um, that Hopefully be- we'll be on placement in three months, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I can't even think what I'm doing in a week. I think I should revise my state question, I guess. <laughs> Where do you see yourself tomorrow? Uh, <laughs> No, yeah, like Hannah said, we're supposed to be on placement come January. We're supposed to have an eight-week placement. And we are really hoping, fingers crossed, that it that will still go according to plan. I guess when I think back maybe just a little bit to, to Christmas time, I think that's going to be a really interesting time for all of us. Um, I, I had mentioned, you know, I'm from Vancouver and my family's all up there. And I had a, a FaceTime call with my parents the other day and they're like, yeah, you probably shouldn't come back for Christmas this year. And uh, that was Excuse me? hard. <laughs> it yeah. was hard to hear, but I don't know if they're if I want to take that risk, you know, with going on a plane and coming back and then immediately going into a placement where I'm going to be working with immunocompromised people. Yeah. Um, so luckily, my my partner is from the the GTA, um, so I am going to be spending my Christmas there with him and his family which I'm okay with, you know, I, I, that's totally fine. It's just going to be different this year. Definitely not what I'm used to. It's going to be my first Christmas um, away from home in my 27 years of life. So that yeah. is a huge change, but I'm pretty sure like all the things that both of you have experienced and managed and make the best of the a situation that's not ideal. I don't know, maybe it might be one of a, a super cool Christmas for you as well. It's different and... It's okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, no, I'm still looking forward to it. Yeah, it's just going to be, yeah, interesting how things play out and who you're going to be able to see. And like, you know, is your Christmas dinner going to be as big as it normally is? Like, it's just going to be a new norm, I think. Well, thank you so much for coming on our show. It's been wonderful to hear your thoughts on how you've managed these past seven, eight months and the uh, challenges t- that you both experienced but overcame and as you continue your march forward so thank you for being on the show and best of luck yes thanks. best of luck thanks for having us yeah thank you so much we really appreciate it yeah, best of luck for your placements <laughs> thanks guys <laughs>